this building became a center for social service delivery. A hotbed for the Chicago Black Arts Movement and many of the great literary giants of the times like Richard Wright, Lorraine Hansberry, Margaret Burroughs, and even Paul Robeson met here in the Negro Writers Club. So the Abraham Lincoln Center became kind of a, a hotbed for intellectual discourse of some of the leading writers and artists during that period. And so it, the building was always known as in, in the black communities a place where people could come to have a meeting. Well, now we move into the 1940s, we move into the 1950s, and this was the full-flown social service agency in the tradition of, of, of Jane Addams Settlement House, uh, Hull House, uh, over on the near west side. Malcolm X had a debate with a black socialist gentleman at the University of Chicago. That's right up the street. And after the debate was over with, some people in the ex-Nation of Islam and Nation of Islam connected people brought Malcolm by here for a brief encounter in the auditorium and a little discussion about his impending trip to Africa. So in 1966, when Dr. King was invited to come to Chicago and spoke at Liberty Baptist Church up the street after that gathering, some folks invited Dr. King over here for a meeting in the Abraham Lincoln Center. And so you have this history of persons going back to 1915, before, even before the shift in population. The renowned scholar, Dr. W.E. Du Bois, gave a public lecture in the auditorium on the question of race. Du Bois being the first African American to earn his PhD at Harvard. And so the founder of what we call African American History Month, Carter G. Woodson, used to walk by this building in 1915 because he was living at the Wabash Y down the street. At 3763 South Wabash. In more contemporary time, Harold Washington, the first African American mayor, was a fixture in this building. As a matter of fact, he spoke in this auditorium so many times you would have thought he was on the faculty. Fred Hampton, who was the chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party, was a fixture in this building as a young man. And so it goes on and on and on. We can say that there is tradition. Uh, and tradition is very important. So the Abraham Lincoln Center emerged and established a tra tradition as a community center long before Northeastern Illinois University was ever thought of. And so with the first renovation of the building in the, the mid-1970s uh, to restore the building, to upgrade the building, and the current renovation of the auditorium at $1.7 million has helped keeping this tradition alive in terms of the infrastructure of, the, of this historic building. So the significance of, of what we call the Don Bailey Legacy Hall, which is the auditorium, who was named in honor of Don Bailey, who served as the director of the center when it was the Center for Inner City Study and it transitioned into the Jacob Carruthers Center for Inner City Study. Uh, that tradition has an upgraded state-of-the-art space, which is sacred to continue that tradition. Well, I've seen some of the greatest scholars in the African world present lectures in my 38 years here. Um, some of them are not that well known, but they're icons in their work in the African community around the world. We can name them. The, the great Chancellor Williams, who wrote a book, The Destruction of Black Civilization. Uh, the great scholar, uh, John Henry Clark, who was a professor at Hunter College. Uh, John. Jackson, who wrote uh, numerous books on 
the impact of African people in antiquity. The great Asa Hilliard, who was a Fuller Callaway scholar at Georgia State University who passed away. Barbara Sizemore, who ended up becoming the dean of DePaul uh, University. The great Dr. Bobby Wright, who was the first black to earn his PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Chicago. Uh, Dr. Wade Nobles from San Francisco State University. It goes on and on and on and on. Of course, our own Dr. Jacob Carruthers, who was the intellectual guru of, of uh, sort of the high priest of our academic trajectory, who passed away in 2004, uh, lectured uh, in that auditorium on numerous occasions and gave profound lectures, and one of them was produced into a book called Intellectual Warfare, which is uh, widely read in academic circle. And I've seen Oscar Brown Jr. perform. His daughter, Maggie Brown, has, has been a, a, a fixture here. The great uh, singer today, D. Alexander in Chicago, is performed here. The great saxophonist, Ari Brown. And the art ensemble, Mawada Budin, which created the great black music sound. And so these musicians were fixtures here. And in the late 1960s, there was a theater called the Oakland Theater over there on Drexel Boulevard. So that music followed the theater over there when the theater shut down and a man by the name of Phil Coran started the uh, Afro Arts Theater. He had a group of, of very talented musicians who came out of the practicing here at the Abraham Lincoln Center who ultimately became Earth, Wind and Fire. It's an institutional icon that has sacred space 